All right, let's get to building the kit. So I'm just going to save the parts that had fallen out of there. And we're going to start with parts A, B, and C. So here's part C. Here's part B. And here's part A. I'm just going to pop them out of the carrier. So while we're looking at it, you can see that um, where the parts have been cut, it leaves a dark edge. And uh, that's left behind by resins in the wood. And it, uh, it doesn't hold glue particularly well. So when parts are going to be glued, you're going to want to sand that edge away. Um, and the other thing is where parts slide against one another. Um, for wood, one of the best uh, lubricants is graphite. And actual pencil lead um, is graphite. So we're going to use the pencil in the kit to apply graphite to some of the parts. But first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, sand one more time the marked faces. So again, you can see the marked face A and B of these two parts. So part A is the, the valve port plate, and that directs air uh, to the correct side of the piston when the engine's running. So I'm just going to sand a little bit, make sure I've got a nice smooth surface on there, that there's no edges or burrs. And same thing with B. B is an inside plate that the piston's going to slide at. It forms part of the, uh, the cylinder. So again, anything that's going to slide against each other, you want to make sure there's as little friction as possible. So using fine grit sandpaper and graphite is the way to go. So we'll get rid of some of that sawdust. All right, so now first time we're going to go ahead and put some graphite on these. So just use the edge of the pencil and you can see I've sharpened it. Um, it comes with a golf point. I put it just to a standard sharpener and gives a little bit more uh, surface to apply the graphite with. So it makes things go a little bit quicker. It'll work perfectly the way it's supplied, but you're going to have to sharpen it at some point anyway. So. so get a good amount of graphite on. You want a nice dark coat. And we're just going to apply it to the whole surface. And with anything, you just take your time. Enjoy the process. It's going to take a little bit. So there we go, that's an adequate amount. It doesn't have to look particularly pretty because these parts are going to be inside of the engine and you'll never see them. So um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to assemble the parts. So this part C, it snaps between on the unmarked side and it doesn't matter which way it goes, just as long as it goes between the two unmarked sides. And you want to make sure that you get a good tight fit. Same thing here. The direction is unimportant, and we're just going to make sure that it goes on all the way. All right, so you can see that it's pressed on all the way. And if you took a little bit of graphite off, you can just add a little bit more. Perfect. So we'll set that aside, and we'll grab the next couple of parts. So we're going to grab parts. Um, uh, let's see, D. And 
I'm just going to sand the end faces because they're going to be glued eventually. So again, this is where and you just want to sand enough so that the residue is gone. It doesn't take very much at all. So you got a nice surface to glue onto there. And now I'm going to sand the face. Again, I'm working on the marked face. D. And that's nice and smooth now. And now I'm going to fill it with graphite. Yeah, and this forms the, the bottom face of the cylinder. So the piston's going to slide back and forth on this and the valve is going to slide back and forth on this. So that's why we're adding graphite to it. Again, it's going to be inside the engine. Once the engine's all sealed up, only you're going to know what it looks like. But get a good amount of graphite on it because it is part of the main working part of the engine. All right, that's a good coat right there. So now we're going to take this uh, valve plate port assembly. So the valve ports just pop right onto here. And it's only going to fit one way. And again, there's no glue. We're trying to keep glue away from any of the parts that are going to be sliding or moving. And again, anytime that you think you can add a little bit more graphite, go ahead and do that. Some spots down there. All right. Okay, so we'll set that aside just for a few minutes. And we'll go and grab the uh, inlet and exhaust plate. And the... Uh, the left plate. So again, we've got uh, some edges we need to sand here because they're going to be glued. And they're all marked out on the instructions which side. So basically all the edges of this are going to be glued. So we're just going to do a quick sand. And this really goes quickly. It takes a couple of seconds to go around the part and remove just enough material so that you have space for the, um, or a good surface for the glue. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we can apply some graphite. So again, we're going to be applying graphite to the marked sides. And the instructions give you a pretty good uh, idea of where the graphite is going to go.
All right, so we got the left plate and the valve, uh, the inlet exhaust plate done. I'm just going to pop out these pieces here. They're not needed. And we're just going to assemble these to the rest of our cylinder. So again, at this point, we still don't have any glue. We're forming all the sort of the body of the cylinder here. So you can see the piston's going to move back and forth here. The valve's going to slide back and forth there. So now we need to prepare the ends. So I'll just set that over there for now. And we can pop out parts G and H. There's G. There's H. Let me just remove that piece there. Okay, so these parts are going to be glued, so we're going to quickly sand the edges that uh, are going to receive glue. So it's just this edge here. Same thing here, it's just the top and the bottom that are eventually going to receive glue. And it's easier to manipulate the parts while they're not glued together and you can get at all the different edges. There we go. So the other things that need to be sanded are these holes. Um, parts are going to slide through those holes. So it's this one, this one, and this one are the ones that we have to sand. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a thin strip of 220 grit sandpaper and maybe even a little bit smaller than that and just Fold it until it's small enough to fit through those holes. So something like that looks good. So I'm just going to take it, feed it through this hole. And you're just trying to get the, again, the residue off and any rough edges that might be there because, again, parts are going to be sliding back and forth against the edges of this hole. So make sure you get the top, the bottom, all the corners. And you can see that we've got a decent surface there. So the other hole's a little bit smaller. Might have to crunch things down a bit here. side as well. Anywhere that you can reduce friction is going to mean the engine runs a little bit smoother and has less tendency to stop or stall or slow down. So let's see, how's that looking? I can use a little bit more. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Better. 
So that looks pretty good there. And we'll do the same for this one. So you don't want to actually sand too much away here because air will escape. So it's one of the areas that will leak air when the engine's running. So you want a, a reasonably good fit, but a smooth fit. So you don't want it to slow down the engine, but by the same token, you don't want a giant hole that the all the air can rush out, and then instead of pushing the cylinder, just be rushing out. Okay, so when you're comfortable that everything looks nice and smooth and the edges are, there's no rough edges there, that everything's going to run smooth in there, just take your pencil and apply graphite just to the edges of the hole. So that when this, the piston rod and the uh, valve are sliding against it, that there's no friction. And if you get a mark on it like that, you could just sand that away. So I'm applying a good solid coat of graphite here because again, this is one of the primary moving areas. There we go. And then I'll just clean up my oopsies. Okay, now we're actually ready to glue the first parts on. So before you actually apply the glue, make sure that you understand the orientation that the parts are going in. So in this case, we've got the marked side G is going on to the front. So it's going to connect to here and it's going to provide two holes. So just do a quick test fit. Make sure that everything fits nice and snug. And this one is going to go on the back. Again, marked side in. So it looks like we're good to go here. All the parts are snug. We can go ahead and apply some glue. So let's start with the front. I'm just going to set it like that so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to apply glue just to the ends away from where any of the moving parts are going to be. So I'm using crazy glue or CA glue here because it allows me to move a little bit faster between the steps. The 
there we go. You can see the glue is there. Again, mark slide in. We've already tested to make sure the parts are going to fit. So we'll just give a little jiggle there. And again, you want to make sure that you got a nice tight fit all the way around. If you have any doubt at all, just use elastics. So you have the elastics handy. You can just snap it around to make sure that everything gets held together tight. All right. And then we'll move on to the other end. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're basically applying the glue in an H. Okay, yeah, I don't know if you can see that there's an adequate amount of glue there. Again, mark side in. There's a notch there and a slot. I'm gonna make sure that everything comes nice and tight. And then, if you feel the need, you can apply a couple of elastics. and everything stays nice and tight. All those edges are nice and sealed and the box is going to be nice and square. And if you want to be extra certain that everything's squared off, you can put the top plate V on. So I'm just going to seize off here. And again, I'm not using any glue. This isn't going to be glued on until much, much later. But it can help make sure that everything is perfectly square while the glue dries. So you have a nice square box, and that's going to form the cylinder body.